We thank you that you are a good, good father. We thank you that you are a responsible father who loves us with an unfailing love. Thank you that you want it well with us, God. That's why you've given us your word. You said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. You knew that we needed your word to live lives that are pleasing to you. Lives that are full, God. To live our best lives. The life that you have intended for us to live. So we thank you today as we bring forth the word. That it will not go back to you void. But it will accomplish that which you have sent it for, O oh God. We believe we receive your word. We declare that our minds are alert and our hearts are receptive to hear. To hear and do your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So the first scripture is found in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. The book of Timothy, the, the first book of Timothy. I believe the kids are going to uh, kids' ministry. Juliana, are you going to kids' ministry? <laughs> Praise God. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. While the kids are going to the kids' ministry, I will give you time to find the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6, verse 12. It's good to see the word for yourself. The word of God, the word of God says, Find the good find of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. There is a fight. Sometimes we don't even choose those fights, but there is always a fight. A fight sometimes will choose you when you are not ready, but you've got to engage. The word of God says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. See what happens when you engage and show up for the fight you will lay hold of eternal life. You will lay hold of abundant life. You will lay hold of the Zoe kind of life. Life to the full until it overflows. When you fight the good fight of faith, there is a victory at the end. The last word becomes a victory. When you engage... So the key here is you've got to engage in the fight. You've got to show up for the fight. So the title of the message today, if you are taking notes, is show up for the fight. Show up for the fight. It's Woody Allen, a successful American filmmaker who said 75% of success in life is showing up. When you, you have shown up, you have won 75% of the battle. You have engaged and said, I am here, bring it on. Bring it on because you know whose God you are. You know that heaven is backing you up. You know that you are not alone in the fight. That's why you can have that confidence that yes, of myself, I cannot do it, but God, because you are with me. I can do this. So we see Paul here encouraging Timothy to fight, to keep going, to not give up, but to hold on to the fight. Because across that, you know, beyond the fight, there is eternal life. Beyond the fight, there is life to the full until it overflows. Beyond the fight, there is shalom. Beyond the fight, there is peace. There is nothing missing and nothing broken. I'm reminded of what Pastor Likonda preached on, uh, on Wednesday when she said, you know, God has said to us, we can pursue. We can overtake and recover all. We have been given permission to engage in the fight and take back what the devil has stolen Hallelujah. So we are showing up for the fight today. We are going to pursue. We're going to overtake and recover it all. We're going to fight for our peace. We're going to fight for our marriages, for our family, for our children. We're going to fight for our dreams. We're going to fight for our future. 
We are engaging in the fight. Paul is encouraging Timothy. Timothy, do not just let life happen to you. Make life happen. Engage in the fight. So today, church, I have come with a word from God to encourage you to show up for the fight. Do not shrink back. We are not those who shrink back. But we are here. We show up knowing that God is fighting for us. God is fighting for us. He wants us to show up so that he can use what we have. He asked Moses, what's in your hand? What do you have that I can fight for you with? Give me something to work with. Give me room to, to, to work with. So just today, let, let's determine in our hearts that we are going to pursue, we are going to overtake, and we are going to recover that which already belongs to us. There is victory beyond it. We've got to remember that we are not victims. We are not victims. We are victors. We should have a, the mind of a victor, not the mind of a victim. You, we've got to have that victor mentality. And also remember that we are fighting, we are not fighting from a place of defeat. We are fighting from a place of victory because Jesus Christ has won it all for us. He has already won the fight for us. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 15. I'll let you go there and, and see it for yourself because I, I truly believe it's important for you to see the word for yourself. Jesus has won the victory for us already. Colossians chapter 2 verse 15 says, Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it, in the cross. The message translation says he stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their sham authority at the cross and marched them naked through the street. We have the victory. The victory has already been won for us. So we've got to have a victor mentality, not a victim mentality. Just look at this example. Uh, life is how you see it, really. An example of a, an alcoholic father with two sons. The other son ended up being an alcoholic himself. But the other son did really well for himself in life. So when they were asked the question, the alcoholic son says, you know, I grew up with my father being such, you know, just a drunkard, drinking all the time. So that's all I knew. So that's why I drink. And the other son says, you know what? I grew up with an alcoholic father, but I decided I don't want to be like that. I do not want to be like that. So he, they, they, they experienced the same thing. But they had different mindsets. So we've got to choose. We have the power to choose. We have the power to choose what we want in life. Life will throw all sorts of things to us. But how we respond to life, I tell you, is how you overcome. If you say, this is my Lord, there's nothing I can do about it. Of course, there is something you can do about it. There is something you can do about it. You know, I don't belittle the, you know, your beginnings, how it all started. There may have been issues and, you know, I sympathize and empathize with you. But now that you know who you are, now that you know whom you belong to, now that you know what he did for you, now that you know that he laid down his life for you, he took your place so that the poor will not be poor anymore. He became poor so that we would not be poor. He became sick so that we will not be sick. He said we are healed by his stripes. We are healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yes, you may not be feeling well right now. Yes, you may be not all that, but God says you are fighting from a place of victory. The victory already belongs to you. Victory belongs to God, so victory belongs to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we have the power to choose. We have the power to choose a, 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 mind, a mindset of a victor or that of a victim, but we are not victims. 
We refuse to be victims. We refuse to behave and act like victims. We are victorious because our God is victorious in war. So no more victim mentality. And you know, showing up for the fight, you've got to show up just as you are. Show up as you, not anybody else. Everybody else is taken. God did not make a mistake in making you who you are. Making you how you are. You know, your, your identity shouldn't be an obstacle. To, you know, that you've got to overcome. Just embrace who you are and come as you are for the fight. God blesses authenticity. He doesn't uh, bless something that is not real. Or, you know, as they say, something that is fake, he blesses authenticity. So show up as you are. Don't feel intimidated by people thinking, who do you think you are, you know? You are this and this. You are not this and that. Just be who you are. No more intimidation. If they can't stand you, maybe they are not part of your destiny. Just show up as you are. Be like Jesus. You know, Jesus was himself. He wasn't being extra by healing the sick. He wasn't being extra by performing miracles. He wasn't being extra by dying on the cross for us. He was who he was made to be. He walked in his lane confidently. You know, if people say, oh, you are too extra, say, no, this is who I am. Just accept me the way I am, but I'm not going to change for you. You know, there's a difference between uh, being horrible and nasty and not people liking you because you are nasty and horrible. But if people don't like you just because you are you, no, refuse to, 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 you know, to come down to what they expect you to be. We touched on it last week that society will put labels on you. And then if you accept those labels, you will leave like what they say you are. If they say you are, let's say, for example, you are always late. You know what we will do? Every, every event you go to, you will be late and feel justified. I'm always late anyway. Just, just as, as an example, but don't, uh, don't kind of accept the labels that the society put on you. Be who God made you to be. Walk in your lane confidently. Show up as you are. Show up with your quirky self. Show up with your unique self. Show up with your short self, with your tall self, with your black self, with your white self, with your brown self, with your big nose and your big ears. Show up just as you are. Show up just as you are. You are enough. So show up for the fight. Don't doubt your own abilities. You have gifts and skills. You have it in you. You know why? Because God made you. And he said, I've made you in my image. He's a creative God. So he has given you creative skills to be who you are. Show up as you are. Uh, let's look at another example. I'll give you a scripture and I'll have a drink because my mouth is really dry. So... Uh, look at the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 and 39. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 38 to 39. If you have found it, it says, So Saul clothed David with his armor. So this is when David went to, you know, uh, he brought lunch to his brothers who were in war with the Philistines. And when he got there, he could see that there was somebody called Goliath who was just being nasty to God's people and, you know, calling God names and saying, you know, will somebody fight me and win? I'm here, come. With? And the, the Israelites were afraid. Nobody wanted to stand against uh, Goliath. But David said, I want to do this. He wanted to step up to the plate. He was only a young boy. So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with this. 
for I have not tested them. So David took them off. We know that David went on and defeated Goliath with just uh, a stone. Um, he was being himself. So putting on that armor wasn't David. He was, he, he was not going to be who God wanted him to be at that particular time. That was not him. It, was, it didn't fit him because it wasn't made for him. He became as he is, just a young little boy with a stone and a thing that you used to, you know. And he defeated Goliath. God blesses authenticity iPhone. Who has an iPhone in the house? Any iPhone? iPhones? Am I the only one? Yeah, I can see. Like, whoop, whoop. <laughs> Me and my husband, uh, we kind of, I have an iPhone. He has an Android. He doesn't like iPhone and I'm not really into Android. So you can see, you know, some differences in there. But um, uh, for, for example, an iPhone, they have this thing, this feature that is for, um, face recognition. I don't know if Samsung has it. They have it. Woohoo, okay, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, let's say uh, smartphones, right? <laughs> smartphones have got a, a feature called face recognition. So if I take Rebecca's phone and I, I want to put it on with my face, it's not going to, you know, the computer says, uh uh, it's not going to open up for me. So it will recognize, my phone only recognizes my phone. Juliana thinks she looks like me, so my phone can recognize her face as well. <laughs> because she likes getting into my phone to play games. But the, the phone, my phone will only recognize my face. Nobody else's face, but my face. So be the authentic you, and God will recognize you and bless the authentic you. You know, engaging in the fight... It does make you visible, and we don't want to be seen. Most of us would rather be in a corner somewhere in a room. We, we know that when we are seen, we are exposing ourselves to so many things, including criticism. And who wants to be criticized? So engaging in the fight will make you visible, but that's okay because you are not alone. Still show up anyway. Still show up anyway. The, the more visible you become, the more opposition you attract. People will always look for something that is not right with you. Just because you've stepped out in faith. Just because you said God has called me to the nations. Just because you have said God has called me to open up this business. Just because you have said God has called me to be a manager in this job. God has called me to go to university, a certain university which they think people like you shouldn't be. You become more visible. And the more visible you are, the more opposition you attract. But don't give in. Don't give in to opposition and shrink back. What God has for you, I assure you today, it is worth fighting for. What God has for you today is worth fighting for. Your purpose is worth fighting for. Your dreams are worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Your children are worth fighting for. Your future is worth fighting for. So show up for the fight just as you are. Don't be afraid of opposition. Don't be, don't be afraid of criticism. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, I know when you, you, know, you show up and you engage in the fights, sometimes it takes longer than you expected. You are like, will this end? You know, Auntie P was saying this morning, sometimes you just feel like it's one thing after another. But Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 uh, encourages us. It says, and let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season... We shall reap if we do not lose heart. We shall reap a harvest if we do not faint. You will reap a harvest if you don't quit. You will get the victory when you don't quit. You will win that fight when you don't quit. You know the reason it's called a good fight of faith is because it's a fight that you win. You will win the victory when you, when you don't quit. 
So church, let us show up for the fight. We are not alone in the fight. God has got our back. God is with us. He has promised never to leave us, never to forsake us, but he will be with us through it all. So how, how do we keep going when the going gets tough? How do we keep going when it seems like it's not ending? What do we do? Number one, if you're taking notes, take time to reflect. Refocus your attention on God. You know, take time away. Take a day off. Take a week off from work. Be still and know that he is God. You know, read the word. The word of God will revive you. It will inspire you. It will motivate you. It will encourage you to go on, to keep going. When you take time to reflect, you know, spend time and in worship. Worship is a weapon of our worth. We fight with worship. When we praise God, we are confusing the enemy and we get the victory. When, when you are, you know, you take time to reflect, you, you can then remember who you are. It gives you time to remember who you are. It gives you time to remember who has called you. You know, it gives you time to remember the goodness and the faithfulness of God. It gives you time to remember his promises, to remember his power, that he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all, you can ask, think, or imagine. When you take time to reflect, you, you remember that you belong to the Most High God. That you belong to the one who made the heavens and the earth. You belong to the one who put the stars in their place. That's who you are. And he loves you with an everlasting love. He wants you well. He wants it well with you. He wants the best for you. So you are not alone in the fight. Remember that you belong to God. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14, it says, And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, they were going to engage in a fight, but they were so discouraged. But this is what Nehemiah said. Um, do not be afraid of them. This is what he said to the people, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people. Remember the Lord, great and awesome. And because you have remembered and you know that God is great, now go and fight for your brethren. Go and fight for your sons. Fight for your daughters, your wives, your houses. Stand in the gap. That's what God, when you show up, you are, you are standing in the gap. There are people watching you. And when they see you, keep, you, just you keep on going and going. You don't shrink back. You keep on going. It gives them some encouragement that if he can do it, I can do it. If he can do it, it must be possible. It is not as impossible as I thought it was. So taking time will re rejuvenate you. It will uh, give you some rest and you will remember better, and then you'll get back to fight, to fight your cause. That's number one. Take time to reflect. When the going is so tough, you're just confused, and you're just tired, and you don't know what to do. Take time to reflect. Number two is to change the strategy. You don't give up on your dreams. You don't give up on your desires. You don't give up on your marriage. You don't give up on what God has for you. But you just change the way you do things. You don't give up on, you know, trying to be healthy and losing that weight. You, you, don't, ch you don't change the dream, but you change how you're dieting. Maybe you, you, you've not been really uh, thinking about what you're eating, and now you want to make a food diary. That is just an example. You don't give up on your dream, but you change the strategy. You change your action plans. You, you, you change, uh, you know, the, your environment. Who is your support group? Change the strategy. Maybe the people that you are surrounding yourself with are not helping you with your vision. They are not helping you with your fight. They are pulling you back. So you change the strategy. Change the execution and give it all to God because he's with you. He's with you. Proverbs 24 verse 6 from the message translation, it says, It's better to be wise than strong. Intelligence outranks muscle any day. And strategic planning is the key to warfare. 
So it's in the word. The word of God has got solutions to everything. It's got answers to all our challenges. So you don't give up on your dreams, but you change the way you execute your goals towards your dreams. You change uh, who you, 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 you're talking to, who, who is helping you in your journey, who, who is trying to help you restore your marriage. Maybe the person you've been talking to hasn't been really helping you. Maybe he's been saying, oh, if I were you, I would have left by now. Maybe that's not the person that you want to help you in your time of need. So number one, you take time to reflect. Number two, you change the strategy. And number three, you speak the word. Speak the word. The word of God is powerful. Because we are people of faith, the Bible says faith speaks. Faith speaks. So you speak the word. You confess God's promises because in the end you will stand in the midst of your confessions. Speak the word. Speak God's promises. Speak answers to your challenges. Uh, speak health when you are challenged with sickness and disease. Speak prosperity when you are challenged with lack. Speak the word. Speak hope when, when it seems hopeless. Speak the word of God. Say to yourself, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say to yourself, I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Say to yourself, I am not alone because God has promised in his word that he will never leave me. He will never ever forsake me. He is with me. He is with me. Wherever I go, he is with me. We can speak the word, church. We can declare his promises over our lives. So that's number three. Speak the word when you feel like it's really, really tough. You don't know what to do. Remind yourself of the scriptures. Remind yourself of the promises of God. Speak it out. The more you speak it out, you hear it. It, it sticks because remember, faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Not hearing somebody giving you uh, steps to, you know what I mean? It, it is in the word of God. It doesn't come by hearing what they say on telly. It doesn't come by hearing what Netflix says. It doesn't come by uh, scrolling down Facebook all day long. It comes by hearing the word of God. So stir your, your faith up by speaking the word of God. So that's number three. Number four, pray in the Holy Ghost. When you've shown up uh, to the fight and it is, it is taking long, it is so hard, it is so tough. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Build yourself up by speaking in tongues. Uh, Jude chapter 1 verse 20. There is also only one chapter in Jude. Uh, verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. You've got to charge your spirit. When it's hard, charge your spirit. Stir your faith up by speaking in tongues. When you speak in tongues, you are confusing the enemy. He doesn't have a clue what you are saying. He doesn't have a clue. He doesn't understand when you speak in the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. So speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. When you wake up in the morning and you are going to work, look yourself in the mirror and, and say, you are more than a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Victory belongs to you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. Speak to yourself. Declare that it's going to be a good day. And I'm expecting only good today. Speak to yourself and, and say, yes, I'm expecting only good because the word of God tells me that my expectation will not be cut off. And I believe God. I trust God. I believe his promises. He is a faithful God. He will not put me to shame because I believe. 
I will not be disappointed. Speak the word. Remind yourself what the word of God says about you. He says when you come to him, just as you are, when you have faith, you can do the impossible. Even you, you can do the impossible. Nothing is too hard for God, and so nothing is too hard for you. Because me and God together, we are a team, and we are a winning team. So the last word in this situation, the last word in this fight, the last word in this challenge, it is victory. It is victory. Speak to yourself. You believe what you, believe what you say more than what other people say about you. So speak it. Speak it. Speak it into being. You will stand in the midst of your confessions. So speak the word, church. Charge yourself. Number five. Number five is don't quit. You know, as they say, quitters, I mean, winners never quit. Don't quit. And we have the wisdom to know when the fight, you know, when this fight is yours, when it's yours to fight. Of course, there are some fights that you really shouldn't be engaging in. <laughs> but God will give you the wisdom to know. When he has promised you, when he has spoken to you, you know that this is the lane he wants you to walk in. You engage in that fight. Do not quit. What does the word of God say? When you've done all you know to do, what do you do? Stand. Stand, therefore. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. It says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. So we stand. We stand still because we know that we belong to God. We know that he is God. We know that the one who called us is able and he's willing. He's willing to help us. He wants to help us, but he wants us to show up for the fight. He wants us to show up for the fight. So church, fight for your life. Nobody's going to fight for you. You've got to fight for your life. Of course, he will bring people, he will bring resources, he will bring people to help you. But you've got to show up. For people to come to you, you've got to show up. You've got to be visible. They've got to see you doing something. When you rise, the word of God says, the kings will come to your rising. So it's time to fight for your life. We find in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14 actually says, this is Nehemiah when they were going to engage in the fight. And I looked and I rose and said to the nobles, I believe I've read it, but I've got to read it again. Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your family. Fight for your work colleagues. Fight for your business. Fight for your career. Fight for your church. Fight for those that you love. Fight and stand in the gap for them. Fight for those who are less disadvantaged than you. Stand in the gap. Engage in the fight and res resist the devil. He will flee from you. He has no power. He just roams around, you know, like, like a roaring lion, but he, he doesn't have teeth. He has no power over you. He pretends like he's got the power, but he has no power over us. You know, we can stomp and stomp on the enemy because he is below us. He is below us. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's where we belong, in heavenly places, above principalities of this dark age. So fight the good fight, the one that you win. Keep going. Keep fighting. Fight for your life and fight for your future. Hold on and don't quit. I said before that, you know, there are, there are other people whose uh, lives are tied to your destiny. There are some people who, uh, who look up to you, whose destiny can only happen if you obey, if you step out in faith. What if that drug addict getting over drugs 
is tied to your obedience? What if that child's life is tied to your obedience? What if that prostitute getting off the street is tied to your obedience? Other people's lives are tied to your destiny. What if that young person not committing suicide is tied to your obedience? Because you have stepped out in faith to help the youth, to help the people in need? What if that nation is tied to your obedience? You know, that, that, that people being freed and living free lives is tied to your freedom. What if that couple's marriage uh, getting stronger and being restored is tied to your obedience? Step out. Step out in faith. Do not be afraid of them. God is with Do not be afraid of their faces. God is with you. I've got to share this because it comes coming to my mind on, on Friday. Usually on Fridays after work, after a long week and I'm tired, I just want to rest and wind down. I watch a movie on Netflix. And I don't know why, but I came across the movie uh, of uh, The Iron Lady, Margaret Thatcher. And it was Meryl Streep who was portrayed, you know, being portrayed as... Um, and I, I was just amazed. Obviously, I wasn't here when she was the Prime Minister. Ladies at the back, you might know M Margaret Thatcher when she was the Prime Minister. Paula, Dawn, you guys born and bred here. I don't know how she was as a prime minister, but it was just amazing that at that time, you know, a woman will step out and take a lead for a nation like Great Britain. You know, uh, they were showing pictures of him like in the movie taking that, you know, like um, members of parliament and she was the only woman surrounded by men. And I'm thinking, how did she do it at that, in that time? But it doesn't matter because he, he, she sensed in her heart that she needed to step out. She needed to do something. She felt in her heart that she needed to do that. And she stepped out in faith. Well, faith, I don't know. But she did step out and did what she needed to do. So it just, for me, like, you know, it doesn't matter how things look, look like, you know, around you. If you know in your heart of hearts that God has called you to do that thing, even if it, it's not been done before by people like you, do not count yourself out. Do not count yourself out. You stand up and be counted among the saints. What does the old son say? To be counted in that number. When the saints go marching in, <laughs> that's it. Hallelujah. So other people finding their purpose, other people fulfilling their destiny, it is tied to your obedience. So stand up and be counted. Step out to the, to, to the plate. Step up to the game. You showing up and striving to let your brilliance and light shine will help somebody think, oh, if they can do it, maybe I can. Maybe I can. And they too will step out and fulfill their purpose. You face your fears. Yes, there will be times where you feel scared to step out because you don't know what's on the other side. But you just do it. Do it afraid. If, you've got, if you're still feeling the fear, Joyce Meyer would say, do it afraid. Do it afraid. I remember when I was, um, I just kind of qualified to do my job and well, and I, I did some driving lessons. I, I passed the test eventually after a few tries. <laughs> I passed on the third, you know, the third time. And I don't know why it was so painful failing a driving test. I, I failed and I just wanted to go home and get undercover and not talk to anybody. I was like, oh, when I look back, I'm thinking, really, what was that all about? But I remember when I was um, now, you know, bought a car, starting to drive. Every morning of that week, I, I just couldn't eat breakfast because I was so scared. <gasps> and I, was, I worked in Nottingley, so I had to go on the M62. And God, in his grace, provided help. <laughs> 
You know, there was a gentleman called um, Alfeo, who were, who were friends of mine. They were my neighbors, and he worked in Selby. You know, I didn't know at the time that Selby is not even near Nottingley. He's, you know, sim we both, yeah, we go to the M62 together. But he would come to my house with his car, drove so that I could follow him, take me to Nottingley, like I would follow him to Nottingley. When I'm safe, Alfeo will go to Selby. I was thinking, he, yeah, that, <laughs> that first week, he really helped me. But every time I woke up to get ready for work, I wouldn't, I wouldn't eat. I wouldn't have breakfast because I was so scared of driving. But I did it afraid. I did it afraid, and now I enjoy driving. <laughs> so you just do it anyway. When you are scared, step up, step out in faith. Step out in faith. You are not alone. You can overcome that fear. You can overcome that fear. It is just nothing. You're, you're just feeling afraid because you haven't done it before. The more you do it, the more confident you become. And you wonder, what was I afraid of? You know, what was I afraid of? I remember when I started leading worship, I used to close my eyes from Psalm 1 to Psalm 3. I was scared of people's eyes. You know what I was people looking at me? It was scary. I'm thinking, why was it scary? Now I'm thinking, why was it so scary? Maybe I felt I wasn't, you know, qualified, I wasn't good enough, they were judging me. But people actually root for you, you know, they want you to do well. Just as a tip, you know, people actually are rooting for you. They want you to do well. They're not here to judge you. We are family. We do life together. So don't be afraid. Step out in faith, and God will help you. God will help you. Tough times never last. I know sometimes they seem like they're going on forever. That crisis feels like it's going on forever. That challenge looks so big, but don't look at the you know, magnitude of the challenge. Look at your great God. He is greater than any challenge. He is greater than any challenge that you will ever face. Tough times, they never last. This too shall pass. The storm won't last forever. The storm won't last forever. Just show up for the fight despite the challenge. Remember, it's a, it's a fight of faith. It's a good fight of faith. The one that you win, the one where your victory is guaranteed. It, it, it seems like this, this game is fixed because we know what is happening. We know how the book ends. We know how the story ends. We know that our story story will end well because God wants us to overcome and when we show up and let him in he will fight for us I mean it may seem like you are surrounded but you are surrounded by him you are surrounded by the angels you may not see it now but they are there protecting you from things that should have happened but they never did because you belong to God and it is for his name's sake that you do well. It is for his name's sake that you overcome. It is for his name's sake that you get the victory. It's on him. It's on him. Paul said to Timothy, I, Paul, I have fought the good fight of faith. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. That was the victory for, for, for Paul because the good fight of faith is when you win. And winning is not being better than any, somebody else. That's not the winning we are talking about. The winning is when you finish your race. Winning is when you have kept the faith. Because the devil is after your faith. He's not after your car. He's not after your house. He's not after your children. He's not after your marriage. He's after your faith. So when you have fought the good fight of faith, you have won the race. You have finished the race. You have kept your faith. And when you have kept your faith, you can go and help others who are still struggling in the faith. So you, you keep fighting. You keep showing up. But you've got to be in it to win it. You've got to show up for the fight. You've got to show up for the fight. 
come to church, even if there's only five people, you show up and say, God, you said when two or three gather in your name, you are in their midst. So I'm here because you have called me to this, to build your kingdom, to build your church. So I'm showing up. I'm showing up. Church, you are anointed to do what God has called you to do. He has chosen you before the foundations of the earth. He has appointed and anointed you for your cause for such a time as this. He has called you with your name. He has inscribed your name in the palm of his hand. You belong to God. You belong to God. So you are anointed to walk your lane. You are anointed to fulfill your purpose. You are anointed to hold on until you get abundant life. You get that peace, you know, that you have been fighting for. You are anointed to do just that. Show up for the fight and God will go to war for you. He is Jehovah Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord who fights our battles. He will help us. He will help you. So don't faint, faint, don't faint in your day of trouble. Do not faint. You are stronger than you think. You are stronger than your challenges. You are stronger than anything that will come up against you. You are stronger than that. You are more than equal to any challenge, equal to any task that, you know, comes before you. You are able it is in you. We, we did touch on in last week that you have a seed of greatness on the inside of you. God has, has put that in every person that he made. We are made in his image. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. We can do all things because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We can do it.